Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in the month of August from least to most favorite. So if you want to see all of the palettes I tried last month and my final thoughts on them, then just keep watching. If you guys are new here, hi, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. Basically, I just like to know anything and everything about all of the new makeup that comes out on the market, and I like to share my thoughts with you guys. I'm a little late. I was late last month, <laughs> I'm late this month, but for the month of August, these are all of the palettes that I tried, new and old, and I'm here to rank them for you. I originally got this idea from Karen Harris, and it's ended up becoming one of my favorite series that I do, just because I really like looking back, laying out the palettes and really deciding what was truly a good purchase and what maybe was not. And it's also a great chance for me to come back and give you guys my second thoughts from my first impressions that I film. So I tried 12 palettes in the month of August. I don't like doing these right at the end of August. I like to give myself a couple of weeks into the next month just to verify my thoughts on these palettes. But we're gonna start off with number 12 and I really tried to like this palette, but honestly, I don't. And that is the Pure and Raw Beauty Christy palette. So originally I did try this in a video and I mostly played with the color sides and I did struggle. I didn't really like the color choices here either but I tried it anyways just to get a feel for the formula and I didn't have the best time. But I thought that maybe if I use the neutral side that I would like the neutral side better. I just wanted to give things more time and try them out again and I still am just not a fan of this formula altogether unfortunately. I really love Raw Beauty Christie. I think she's such a kind person and I was so excited to be able to try out her collab. I wasn't initially moved by this palette. Like I said I didn't really like the colors. I didn't feel like it was something that I needed. This was so kindly gifted to me from my friend Yachty. I was so excited to try it and it just kind of disappointed me. I even used it today to really finalize my thoughts on this and I use like the most basic easy colors to formulate. I played with the browns and I put this gold all over my eyelid. This simple eye look took me 10 minutes because I had trouble blending. I don't know. This is not the kind of formula for me. Especially with everyday shadows. I don't want them to be overly pigmented. I don't want them to be too powdery because for every day I just want to throw them on my eye. I want them to blend themselves and I want them to look good and this took a lot of work for me. I had to really tap off because this has a whole lot of kickback. It deposits a lot of pigmentation but then I find it doesn't really blend out. You have to spend so much time blending the shadows out to make them not stick to your eye. I did really like the shimmer shade but honestly if I was going to create a look like this I would much rather dig into my Vizzy Art palettes and then put this color all over my lid. So I just don't find this palette very easy to work with. And that's not on Christy Parts. That's all Pure. And I do have some other palettes from Pure that I do enjoy, but this formulation, I just can't get down with it. I do not like it, even the neutral sides. I thought if I gave the neutral side a chance that my thoughts would be redeemed and they just were not. I was very disappointed in that one. Let's move on to number 11. I did a sponsorship in the month of August with e.l.f. and I'm so very grateful. And I got the Earth and Ocean palette to try out. I've always been very interested in this palette. Kelly Gooch loves this palette, so I wanted to give it a try. And this palette, for the price, truly, it really is not that bad. I just have to be picky because I tried a lot of good palettes in the month of August. So I think this one is very good for the price. If you're looking for some colors that you might not have in your regular palettes and you don't want to spend a lot of money, this is a great palette to go for. I think some of the shadows in here are hit and miss, and that's kind of why it's ranking at number 11. Like this shade right here, Tundra, it looks stunning, but it's a hot mess. It gets everywhere. It falls all over your face. I find that the blue side is a little bit harder to work with, which isn't surprising because they are harder to formulate. The green neutral side, I think is really fantastic for what it is. So I don't dislike this palette. It's just, it had tough competition. It really is not bad, but you do have to play around with this palette because some colors are going to work better than others. But for the most part, I do enjoy this palette. I don't know if I would necessarily strongly recommend it. I really would say only if you're looking to add colors like these in your collection and you don't want to spend a pretty penny because you won't use these as often. I think this is when you want to get it, but it's not the best formulation, but it's not bad. Moving on to number 10. I actually have quite a few Odin's Eyes palettes in this video because they came out with a four palette collection. So there are four palettes in here. So ranking in at number 10 is the Alva 2 Mini Ocean palette. And the reason why this is ranking relatively low is because I just won't use these 
colors as much. I really don't like the blue and orange mix. I know they are complementary colors, but in a palette, I'm really not gonna put blue and orange on my eyes unless I'm like creating a look for Instagram. So I just don't see this as a palette that I'm going to reach for a lot. I don't think the quality in here is bad. I think it is good quality, but just preference wise, I didn't love this color combo as much as the others. And there are just other palettes in this collection that actually excited me more. So this one is just kind of personal preference. Let's move on to number nine. It is another Odin's Eye Palette, and this is the Mini Forest Palette, and I think that this palette is beautiful. If you love turquoise green kind of looks, you will like this. The only thing that kind of turned me off about this palette is that it pulled much more green on the eye, which is not a bad thing because even the packaging here is green, so I think that's kind of the vibe we were going for. It's very fairy-like, it's very ethereal, definitely fits in with the brand, and I do really like this palette. I just like the other palettes that I had more, so I have nothing bad to say about this at all other than it looks a little bit different on the eyes than it did in the pans, but this is a really gorgeous one. I do recommend this one if you like this color story. Moving on to number eight, Viseart came out with some new palettes and I'm so excited. So number eight, we have the Midsummer palette and I thought I would like this one more than I ended up liking it. It is a very, very nice palette. We're up to the point where everything I'm talking about is very nice. <laughs> this is a good one. Uh, it has some cooler mauve tones in here, which I think is gorgeous. Very pretty for a nice wash all over the eyes for a very soft look. So this isn't for somebody who's going for pigment and color and dimension. You're not gonna get that with this. I like it, it's soft. It's just, there were more exciting palettes that came out, if that makes sense, because it is a little bit light wash, not a lot going on with it. So it is nice for sure. There was just a lot of more fun, punchy palettes that I'm more excited about. Moving on to number seven, we have another Odin's Eye, and this is the Mini Sky Palette, and it's the purple one, so you guys know that I love it. I would say, though, quality-wise, this isn't the best quality. I think that the other two Mini Alvas had better quality. Like, these shadows, I think, are a bit flaky, but overall, color story-wise, this one speaks to me, and I really like the looks I've created with this one. I like that you have these neutral tones, a golden tone, a mauve tone, and a purple, and I do tend to stick to the outer four colors, so even though I don't like the middle, I do like the outer colors so much. And this one is just a pure color preference thing. You guys know I say it in every video, I love purple eyeshadows, so I'm gonna grab for this one more. So that's why this one is ranking higher. I think it is gorgeous, you guys. And it's so fun and so compact and just so glittery and pretty. Moving on to number six, we have a, another Vizzy Art palette. This is the Solstice palette. And I was surprised by how much I like this one. I thought for sure I would like the Midsummer more, but I ended up just really liking the tones in here better. I think it's just a little bit more summer appropriate, which this was a part of the summer collection. And I just like the bronzy tones, but you still get the neutral soft tones in here. So this still does create a very soft look and the quality in here, impeccable. I love how tiny it is. I just think this is a great neutral everyday kind of palette, nothing too crazy on the eyes. It's just ranking where it's ranking because there was a lot of palettes this month that were a little bit more exciting to me. So just because it's not as exciting to me doesn't mean mean it's not a bad palette. It's a very good palette and I do highly recommend this one if you like that soft, warm, summer kind of eye. This is perfect. Number six, the Solstice palette from Busy Art. Moving on to number five. I was surprised by how much I like this, but these colors are truly in my comfort zone when it comes to everyday kind of neutral shadows. So this is the One Size Visionary palette from Patrick Starr's brand. And I don't know, I feel like a lot of people are like, about his brand coming out, but at the end of the day, he started off as a makeup artist. He knows what he likes. He has the connections in the cosmetic industry, and I think he came out with a very good palette. While it's not the most exciting, I really like the colors. Like These are colors that I feel comfortable using. I could get a very similar look to the look that I'm wearing with this palette as well. I love the original look that I created in my review with this palette. I thought it was gorgeous, but even when we play with these neutral tones, they are all still very soft. They blend out very beautifully. They just give you an overall great everyday kind of look. So while this isn't anything very inspiring or unique, I think the quality in this is really good and this kind of fulfills every color that you need for an everyday eyeshadow look. I really like this palette. I think it's nice. Moving on to number four, I have the Pat McGrath Mothership Palette in Rose Decadence. This one's not my favorite from her, if I'm being honest. I do think the tone
ones are very beautiful. I think the quality is decent. I will say, I do think the quality dropped a little bit with this palette. I feel like her previous palettes were a little bit more creamy, a little bit more soft. And that doesn't mean this quality is bad. It is very good. I do have a review on this if you are interested in seeing this palette in action. It's just, I was a little bit bored with this palette. I feel like it's a lot of repeated tones based on what is already in her collection, which is fine. You know, we're falling down the NARS orgasm, Charlotte Tilbury pillow top kind of train. If the color sells, keep selling it from a business standpoint. But this one just honestly didn't excite me at all. I can't deny that it's not like a good palette. It is a good palette, but it just doesn't excite me as much as I wanted it to. Some because Pat McGrath usually lights a fire inside me. This one didn't light a fire inside me, but it is really pretty and it is very good. Moving on to number three. This one is the complete opposite explanation as the Pat McGrath, whereas this one is ranking so high because I was so excited for it. So this is the Odin's Eye Alba 2 eyeshadow palette. So this is the big mama of the Odin's Eye collection and I was just so excited for it because I was ready for Odin's Eye to come out with a new palette and I really feel like they delivered. And this, like I said, it's ranking so high because I was so excited about it. I think, you know, the one size has a better quality. I think Pat McGrath has better quality, but this is still very good quality and I just love that they really played around with color this time. It's something we'd never seen from the brand before and I really do get nice vibrant looks. There are things that I would change about the palette if I could. I would add more depth. I would add a little bit more options. I would take out the glitter shades, but when I see this palette, it excites me and it inspires me. And that is one thing that's very special about an eyeshadow palette for me is how inspired do I feel to create looks? And because I like the brands and because it has a nice, decent formula, I was really excited for this. So I love the vision that they had for this palette and I think it was very well executed. Moving on to number two. Okay, one and two were really hard. Ultimately, Tiny Marvels from Sydney Grace hits at number number two. This is an awesome palette. If you don't know, this is in collaboration with Mel Thompson and I think she did an incredible job with this palette. This palette really speaks to who I am as a makeup wearer. It's a more neutral palette, but you have little pastel pops, which I really like. I feel like you can get a lot of different looks and I love the more purpley mauve pops with some rose tones as well. For when I want to be a little bit more colorful than neutral, you have a fun pop of green, which would look really really good with the golden shade, but of course you have the normal neutrals to fall back on. So I just love the curation of the palette. I love the colors that she chose and Sydney Grace's quality. <sighs> it is like no other you guys it's such a different formula than what i have in my collection from other brands and it's top of the line super creamy super pigmented very easy to blend and this is just a comfortable palette for me but it also inspires me at the same time so i'm so happy that mel put a palette like this together because it's incredible and moving to number one i cannot believe this is my favorite palette this month but i think the reason why it's ranking at number one is because I'm more shocked at how much I love it because this palette truly at the end of the day it's nothing special it's nothing original <laughs> I don't know, I've been loving it. And this is from NARS, and this is their little Orgasm X quad. And literally, you guys, you can get the same exact look with the Pat McGrath palette. It's not an original palette at all. You could probably get something similar with one size. You can create this look that you get from this quad with so many other palettes, but I bought this last minute and I have been loving it. I think part of the reason why I grab for it so frequently is because it is so small. It's just easy to not have to think about out. You just don't have to think about what look you want to get. So if I know I want a more pinky toned eye, I go, okay, I'll just grab my NARS quad and you get dimension in here. You can build the shadow. It's just ABC easy. Does the work for you. You get a gorgeous look every time. There's so much dimension in the shades. I did not expect to love this as much as I did, but this definitely out of all the palettes this month, this excited me the most, more so because I was shocked. So maybe if I wasn't so shocked, it wouldn't be ranking so high because I'm just looking down at what I have. This is not nearly as exciting and amazing as some of the other palettes that I mentioned, but I just keep grabbing for it. It's just so easy and simple to use. So that is all I have for today's video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know how you're liking this series, what were some of the best palettes that you've been trying, and keep an eye out for it next month. Hopefully, if I can get my act together, that one will be up in like two or three weeks. So if you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!